hi everyone. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Maria Marshall. I'm the director of the North Central Regional Center for Rural Development. So I, welcome to our webinar series. Um, our webinar today, um, as you know, is the role of festival volunteers in supporting rural community development and psychological a psychological ownership perspective. I'm going to um, go ahead and um, introduce our three speakers, but before I do that, um, I'm going to take advantage of promoting and, and making sure that you're all aware that we do have an NCR stat um, survey. And that NCR stat survey and data are publicly available to anyone. They're op it's open access data. Our 2022 baseline survey is up for anybody. So if you go to our website and go to data resources, you'll see that website, uh, that data set there. Again, open access has a little bit of everything. And since we're talking about tourism um, today, it does have uh, quite a few questions on placemaking. So um, please uh, go and use it. That's what we want here at the NCRCRD is for you to use that open source data. Um, and just as a heads up that we will have um, a caregiving data set available at the beginning of 2024. So be on the lookout for that um, as well. And so I think I've left time for more people to come in while I can blah, blah, blah. So let me go ahead and introduce our speakers. Um, our first our speakers are Dr. So Jung Lee, who focuses on research about consumer behaviors in pop culture mm -hmm. tourism, club industry, rural tourism, and sustainable tourism from, from a psychological perspective. Our next speaker is also Dr. Linda Neen. Her research interests include rural and community business, retailer consumer relationships, small retailer competitive strategies, family businesses, and experiential marketing and retailing. And Dr. Miran Kim focuses on the question of how service innovation can bring hospitality business practitioners to improve their organization's performance and advance customer service. And before they get started, I'll uh, promote our next webinar for November. Um, November is Rural Health Month. And so um, we're talking about rural health and well-being. So um, I think that's going to be a really interesting webinar as well. well I think all our webinars are interesting, but <laughs> again, I think really interesting. It will focus on improving rural health uh, by focusing on social well-being and also participatory research to promote shared leadership toward rural maternal and child health and emotional well-being. So again, be on the lookout for uh, the troge of emails that we'll probably be sending you to remind you about our November webinar. And with that, I will pass it on to our speakers for today. Thank you uh, for your introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank, first of all, to attend this webinar. Uh, I'm So Jung Lee from Iowa State University, and I'm very pleased to share our study today. This research was done uh, through collaborations with other two universities, uh, Kansas State University and also Michigan State University. So today uh, we have three presenters, including myself, Dr. Miran Kim and Dr. Linda Nim today. So this uh, project was funded by NCICRD grant and we are very uh, grateful for this opportunity and uh, to understand volunteers' perspectives. So as you're aware, uh, rural community has changes over time with the rural developments such as high-tech farming, manufacturing declining, and population aging. However, uh, rural communities are very proud of their heritage and traditions, and many are seeking ways to bolster local economies and highlight what they have to offer. In particular, a uh, rural festival can be an important contributor to a community, and it can be a means of sustainable community development. So for example, Traverse City Film Festival attracts uh, over 100,000 visitors and generates over 5 million each year. Do you know how many residents live in Traverse City in Michigan? It's only about 15,000 people. So effective festival operations and management are very essential to a successful event. And in, in fact, uh, many rural festivals heavily rely on volunteers to remain viable. So we want to know uh, the role of volunteers and their characteristics. 
volunteers devote their time and efforts without expecting anything directly in return. They are typically strong advocates of events they are supporting. So they dedicate the volunteers are essential for a successful event. Volunteers can be viewed as an important part of a community. Community capital framework, as you see in this figure, uh, was introduced by Flora and Flora, provide an important framework to understand val valuable assets in a community, including natural, like uh, mountain, cultural, like heritage, human, like skills, social, like events, political, like a policy, financial, like a funding, and built, like infrastructure. And various forms of community capitalists are enhanced by festive events, especially as volunteers are a significant workforce asset in the rural community. Volunteers can be viewed as important human capital for the community. There are, has been a number of studies on volunteers' characteristics. First, um, many studies have looked at the volunteers' motivation, why they are volunteering. And there is a scale developed and called volunteer functions inventory that describe different motivations such as their values, understanding, social, career, protective, and enhancement. Second, a sense of psychological ownership can be an important factor. This concept describes individuals' feelings of ownership from being a part of organizations, such as like my car, my event, I'm the owner of something, I'm so much in it. So this concept has been um, has sub-dimensions such as self-efficacy, say I believe I can do for the event, accountability, say I'll be protecting, belongingness. I'm part of it, and self-identity, like I identify myself as a part of the festival. So this concept has been applied to organizational behaviors in general. So there is opportunity to apply this concept to volunteer research. However, little research has done yet. Community involvement can be an, another important part to understand how volunteers work toward the communities to actively seek out the community values, concerns, and aspiration. Lastly, volunteers support and strengthen the community by giving their time, their effort, service, goodwill, and word of mouth, and of course, a financial and other in-kind donations of products and services. So putting together all important pieces of volunteers, this study viewed that volunteers' motivation ownership and involvement will play a key role in supporting community development. However, while volunteers play a critical role for festivals in rural, fe rural areas, rural festivals organizers may have a limited knowledge and understanding because they have a limited financial resources, insufficient um, organizational structure and staff, and also lack of market research. Also, um, there is a little research has paid attention to volunteers' psychological perspectives and characteristics such as psychological ownership. So this study wanted to identify the role of rural festival volunteers on rural community development by investigating the relationships among motivation, psychological ownership, and community involvement and support. And the figure shows our, our proposed model. So we have four uh, specific hypotheses. First, volunteers' motivation will be unimportant for developing psychological ownership of the festival. Second, the volunteers' psychological ownership will influence their community involvement. So we want to see if psychological ownership will be an important mediator between motivation and involvement. And lastly, community involvement will impact the development of community support. 
So now we are moving to our research methods and findings, and Dr. Viran Kim will provide more information in detail. Okay, thank you, Seljong. Uh, regarding the sample and data collection, we employed a quantitative approach and selected 12 rural festivals in the states of Iowa, Kansas, and Michigan. Uh, the data were collected from festival volunteers, both on-site and online surveys, with a total of 429 participants, including 98 from paper surveys and 331 from online surveys. The table shows the number of volunteers who participated in the survey from each festival, uh, specifically 263 data were collected from seven different uh, festivals in Iowa uh, State and 133 data from uh, Michigan State and 33 data from Kansas State. After cleansing uh, the incomplete data, 373 cases were used for data analysis. Uh, descriptive data analysis was conducted using SPSS, and structural equation modeling was employed to test both the measurement and structural models using M+. Uh, here are the demographics of the volunteers. Uh, the majority of the respondents were female, about 75%, and the majority of survey participants were over 60 years old. Additionally, most of the respondents, about 90%, uh, they had some college degree or higher, and about 50% of the respondents reported an annual housing income of $75,000 or more. And here are more uh, the volunteer profiles. About 40% of the respondents were employed full-time and another about 40% of them were retired. The majority of the respondents uh, resided in their current state and most of them, uh, they had lived there for nine years or longer. Uh, additionally, more than 50% of the respondents had uh, volunteered for more than six years. And the majority of the respondents volunteered at the festival for between one and four hours. Okay, here uh, the results of the measurement model are presented uh, first. The measurement model shows a good fit, as you can see here, okay? This table also presents the measurement items for values. Uh, the factor loadings were close to 0 0.0, indicating good conversion validity. And squeeze and cortices showed uh, that most responses were normally distributed at the univariate level. For psychological ownership, uh, community involvement, community support, the factor loadings were greater than 0.75, indicating good conversion validity. And skinniness and cortices values show that most responses were normally distributed at the univariate level. So there was no critical issue here. And further, this table shows the validity and then uh, and also reliability of each construct. Uh, first, all values of average variance extracted, which is AVE, uh, were greater than 0.5, confirming conversion validity. And the AVE values were greater than squared correlations of the corresponding constructs which confirms discriminant validity as well. Uh, additionally, uh, Cromba Alpha and composite liability exceeded 
the cutoff values of a 0.7 providing evidence of a, a internal consistency. So overall, uh, the findings here suggest uh, satisfactory validity and reliability of the measurement model. Okay, now uh, a structural model was conducted to examine uh, the hypothesized relationships. Uh, first, among these six motivations, uh, value, social, and uh, enhancement were significant uh, motivations to develop volunteers' psychological ownership. And then psychological ownership influenced community involvement, which in turn influenced community support. Overall, the findings imply that volunteers with a strong social value and enhancement motivation were more likely to possess a strong psychological ownership of the rural festival. Uh, this in turn all also led to active community involvement and eventually support for the community. Interestingly, this study also further uh, analyzed the mediation effect of a psychological ownership using bootstrapping approach. Uh, as shown in this table here, only three motivation dimensions, uh, such as a value, social and enhancement had a significant indirect effect on community involvement. That means psychological ownership was a significant mediator uh, between value, social and enhancement motivation and community involvement. So from now on, I will pass the rest uh, on to Linda for the conclusion and uh, implication parts. Thank you, Miran. Hey, um, so in terms of our conclusions from this study, um, uh, as our model just suggested, there was strong support for the relationship among motivations, psychological ownership, um, community involvement, and community support. And among those three motivational factors, social value and enhancement, really were um, uh, most important in terms of forming psychological ownership. And psychological ownership, in turn, uh, influenced community involvement. Um, it's really interesting when you think about um, small community events, and a lot of times um, you may just think, oh, we just need all hands on deck, whoever we can get. And this really um, shows in terms of our findings that um, understanding who the volunteers are and what they're, what motivates them and really gets them to tap into that psychological ownership where they um, feel a sense of belonging and uh, self-identity and accountability really makes for a stronger volunteer and a more dedicated one that will hopefully come back again and again to support these community events. So psychological ownership uh, is mediated mediated motivation and community involvement, which implies that psychological ownership plays a significant role in bridging rural events and the community. In terms of uh, conceptual contributions um, to the literature, um, this uh, study identifies the vital role of volunteers as forms of human capital within the uh, community capitals framework. Um, this significantly expands the volunteerism literature uh, in the rural community context. Um, it also examines motivation as a multidimensional construct and offers a specific view that recognizes the importance of volunteer motivations. Um, employing psychological ownership as a mediator uh, in connecting the local event and the community was also um, a new contribution to the literature um, in, on volunteerism. Uh, finally, presenting a sequential relationship uh, from the festival to the community provides a holistic and logical view and understanding how volunteers support community development. So from a practical sense, rural festival volunteers may serve as um, really important kind of behind the scenes vehicles for community development. Um, a lot of times we think of uh, maybe federally funded programs or you know other other types of um, 
built uh, structures, et cetera. But volunteer, volunteers and the festivals that they support really uh, can be important vehicles for community development. Uh, the importance of local volunteers' motivation and their sense of psychological ownership in uh, community involvement and support was clearly seen in this study. Um, so we can conclude, if you're a festival planner, that effective volunteer programs that meet the need of motivations, like you tap into the values and importance that volunteers see uh, in the event, um, that uh, they see it as an opportunity to engage socially within the community and form relationships, and you know gives them a sense of, of purpose and, and they're contributing. So that's the enhancement and the self-esteem component. So those are elements of effective volunteer programs that maybe are sometimes overlooked in the urgency to just recruit numbers. So I think that's a really significant finding. Um, psychological ownership uh, also shows that working closely with community developers can help to connect volunteers to uh, community activities. Um, and in turn, those volunteers will uh, more likely support by further use of their time, giving of their service, um, sharing positive word of mouth to others to get them involved, um, and certainly also providing financial support and other types of in-kind donations. Uh, volunteers, therefore, are a really important um, source of human capital. And without them, we would not have a vibrant and sustainable community. They really are, are key in that process. Okay, as far as our future research and some outreach tools coming from this specific study, uh, we'd like to examine if volunteers' demographics and festival profiles uh, moderate the impact of volunteers on a rural community. And secondly, um, exploring the role of psychological ownership in developing volunteers' experiences and behaviors, um, such as place attachment, subjective well-being, and their leadership. Um, we will make the volunteer survey questions from the study available. Uh, they really were interpreted in uh, very um, tangible, user-friendly terms, because um, we did outreach to, to collect data with uh, community volunteers. So it is um, ready to use in rural communities as an outreach tool and to share with festival organizers. Okay, and thank you. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to us. You see our emails and um, contact information there. And again, we'd like to acknowledge and thank the North Central Regional Center for Rural Development and CRCRD for their funding and support of this research project. Thank you. Um, if you have questions, you can um, put it in the chat. Um, I will try to read off of that. Or uh, we're not too big of a group. You can also feel free to unmute yourself um, and, and ask a question. Okay, I see one question. It says, thank you. What motivated this study? I see a colleague from FSU here, Dr. Kim. How did Broad get involved? So who is the question directed to, please? Um, it's to any of the three of you, <laughs> I would say. Um, uh, yeah. So, so Jung, did you want to take that one since you're the um, lead? Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So actually, uh, one of my uh, master's students were interested in a volunteer study because uh, she worked at the uh, festival, Traverse City uh, Film Festival, uh, almost like seven, eight years ago. So that was an opportunity for me to get to know about how volunteer is critical in rural festivals. So we did a little study about their um, motivations and like, ownership. So based on that, uh, we found that, uh, you know, like there are different types of motivation has different uh, impact on their, their behaviors. So based on that, uh, I wanted to actually further uh, expand the study to other contexts, different festivals, different types of festivals, if that makes sense. 
So uh, that was opportunity for uh, for me to uh, you know work with other collaborators, uh, Linda and Miran, and also Dutcher is not here today. Uh, so you know you wanted to have a more comprehensive understanding of volunteers' perspectives. Mm -hmm. And we had a great fun to go to different festivals um, in Iowa, different types of um, uh, like small community uh, events. I get to know their uh, you know, volunteer passions and you know their willingness to participate in. And um, one thing uh, kind of challenge was was um, right before um, COVID. So we have to uh, expand our research more and do more in an online setting. But uh, I was happy to collect data through different approaches. <clears throat> Hopefully I answered the questions. Um, Miran or Linda, if you have anything else. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I think I could also um, add that when Sojong came to me with the, this idea, and I was aware of the students' research as well. And, and having done a lot of rural research, um, particularly in Iowa, but in the Midwest, just was aware of the diversity of types of festivals that we have. I mean, we talked about the Traverse City Film Festival, but you saw from the list, there were a variety, like the Sweet Corn Festival. <laughs> the, I mean, there's, there could be things that are very agricultural, you know, traditional in nature um, versus a, a film festival. So, so we were really interested um, to see how the volunteerism um, played out across these different kinds of festivals. And I agree with Sojong that it was really interesting to, to see how each of those, um, those festivals, what they really brought to the different communities and um, uh, to to gather the the sense of community pride, and you could really see that those those brought a lot of economic activity to those communities, and a lot of um, people coming together, and multi generations of families and residents coming back to attend those festivals was also, um, you know, a great show of of support and tradition. So, you know, as we're looking for sources of economic development in rural areas, um, these certainly have seasonality attached to them, but they are events that can, if they're strong and supported well by um, volunteers and have that infrastructure and some of those things that we've talked about as being, you know, really important, um, that they can uh, add significantly to uh, a lot of the different community capitals, yes, economic development, but they have a um, a big impact on um, the the optimism and the 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 mindset and the psyche of the people who live there. And I just really think that it, it, this brought a whole shed a whole new light for me on you know just really getting to know the volunteers and to to do some some some. Um, training and just, uh, you know, kind of bringing them on board relationship management with the volunteers. It's not, again, just all hands on deck, which you oftentimes see people scrambling to do. So um, I think that there are some really tangible takeaways from this study. Have you, have you offered any of this information or shared it with state service commissions? Like the Community Service Commission and or then federally Corporation for National and Community Service, because they would they would eat this information up. Um, we haven't yet. Um, so this is just really pretty new in terms of um, having these findings. But I don't know that that was an outlet that I had necessarily thought about. So Jung, how about you? Yeah, I haven't uh, we haven't reached out to them yet, but definitely we are more yeah. than happy to share our findings. Uh, whatever yeah. our you know findings, so. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that suggestion. That's yeah. a great yeah. one. Two, two things on that. I, I'm curious here. I'm from Michigan State University, the Center for Community and Economic Development. And I see my a colleague from MSU over here, Dr. Kim from the, the Business College. So I'm, I'm just curious as to how, how did you get, how did MSU's Business College get involved with that? Because one thing I've noticed is, um, particularly from the business side, having been a graduate from there, but working on the community side, um, volunteers are not usually the focus point for our, our business friends, but yeah. there are there are a huge, huge impact for community development and resiliency. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm really happy that that connection has been made, and I, I would like to hear a little bit about as to how it, how this came together further with MSU. 
Thank you for the question, Mary. Uh, first of all, Sojang is a good friend of mine. So uh, she invited me and then uh, uh, when she asked me about, uh, to join this research, uh, one of the fascinating facts I realized, uh, uh, personally, I like uh, the Cherry Festival in Traverse City in Michigan. I was shocked to know uh, they have only three full-time employees uh, for that festival. That is the one of the uh, largest uh, uh, international festival in Michigan, as I know. But uh, that uh, the festival is run by most of the volunteers. So I was so excited to know about that. And then the economic impact was also huge. So I love the topic, although my main research area is more about consumer behavior, but uh, I really enjoyed about this research. So yeah, that, that was a great opportunity to work with uh, Linda, Sojung uh, together. Yeah. Thank you. You may, you may definitely want to share this with the state then and the Community Service Commission, because if you can quantify it or a dollar amount on that as someone mentioned over here in the chat box, they would um, be really happy to have that information. That's great. Yeah. That actually leads me right to this next question that there are, somebody was saying, um, did you come up with a value for festival volunteers? A per hour amount would be helpful. I think they're looking for what the in-kind value would be um, for a grant that they're being applied for. So I don't know if you all try to quantify the volunteer time. So, John, oh. I don't think we've done that yet, have yeah, we? Yeah, because the purpose of the study was not about that. So we didn't really quantify the time uh, to calculate the value. But uh, as we shared, uh, we looked at how many hours they uh, did yeah. per day. And uh, most people uh, participate in the events as volunteers one to four hours. So I would say, you know, half of them you know, volunteered the four hours per day. But uh, we didn't really calculate the value based yeah. on the amount. But we have the hours, so we could easily do yeah. that. Yeah. I know I've seen grant proposals where that's that's a point that, that you bring okay. forward, right? Yeah, so no, that's another really great point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there is another question in the chat that says, um, was there a population range that you used for your rural festivals? I would think that popu population of the town surrounding area would impact the age demographics shared. The only thing that we uh, focused on as a population for study was, you know, if uh, the area is a rural area. So, you know, we followed a guideline how we determine uh, rural areas. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember that um, the rural area is defined as a population with 50,000 or less. Yeah, and so, some of yes. these, mm -hmm. yeah, some of the rural communities were, I mean, if you look on the rural urban continuum code, I mean, there's variation in terms of how rural and remote they are. So that would no doubt have have an impact, but they all were certainly under that 50,000 and, and many of them way under that 50,000 uh, threshold. And I don't know if you asked this in my, I might have missed it, but since you're talking about psychological uh, well-being or basically the ties that somebody has to their community, do you have how long a volunteer has lived in a particular community? And you might have asked that and I just missed it. I wondered if that makes a difference if you're a new new resident to, to a place versus um, have lived there for a longer time, if that that kind of that sense of place would would be different. Yeah, I think we have that data, don't we, So John? So we uh, actually ask their residential status, whether they're current or past or non-residents, um, and about 82% are current residents. And we didn't ask how long they have lived in the area, um, but we actually asked how many years they volunteered. 
And I would say uh, over 50% uh, actually volunteers over uh, 60 years. So I, assume, yeah, we didn't look at the relationships uh, between the the uh, the time, how long they lived and their uh, motivations or psychological ownership. But um, definitely I would assume that that was uh, like correlations uh, between, between them, yeah. yeah. Um, somebody's put in the chat, Ohio State University Extension is hosting a conference on December 5th on mental health and substance use stigma to rural communities. <laughs> Here is the link to learn more and to register. Well, thank you, Kelsey. We appreciate uh -oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're all interested, take a look at the chat and follow the... Um, the and actually, uh, as I rem reminded everybody, November is um, Rural Health Month, so perfect to, to kind of register for that. Uh, Grace, yes, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, I was wondering if there were any questions related to volunteer fatigue um, in the survey. I don't believe we measured that, so John, right? Yeah, volunteers, what? Fatigue, meaning that they uh -huh. they were very tired uh, <laughs> oh, okay. over many years. <laughs> 60 years is a long time to volunteer. So, <laughs> Yeah, we didn't uh, ask that question uh, in our study. Yeah. Okay. Why, well, why are we interested in that question? <laughs> That's an issue that um, I've come up with a lot in mm -hmm. communities that we work with and mm -hmm. the um, community development professionals that we work with is, is volunteer fatigue, especially in these rural communities where there's a small population, it tends to be the same sure. people who are or showing more up more to volunteer. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. I think that could be our next topic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that would be really interesting. Yeah. interesting. To, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Grace. Any um any more questions? Well, something for you guys to think about as you're doing um the toolkit for extension or uh, wanting to um spread the I know you said the survey instrument is you, you'd make it available. You might want to make it available on the community uh, development extension library. You mm -hmm. can upload um, fact sheets and instruments, and so that would be a uh, it's a repository, and so that might be a, a great place to um, disseminate disseminate okay. that. Yeah, we'll definitely check that out and be sure we get it loaded up, uploaded. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm we are more than happy to assist um, rural festival organizers. So you know, based on the survey questions that we developed, uh, if you actually conduct a survey. And if we need help to analyze your findings, we are more than happy to help you. So feel free to reach out to us for any assistance in like data collection or analysis and findings. Fantastic. Well, any other questions? I have to remove his memory to pause. <laughs> Actually, people ask a question. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, just a reminder, um, as Shelley put it in the chat, this webinar is uh, recorded. So please um, feel free to, to go back and look if you need it. It should be in your inbox next week. Um, and a reminder that our next webinar is November 8th um, at 2 p.m., Rural Health and Wellbeing. Uh, two, and there'll be two presentations. So I look forward to seeing you in November. Thank you, Sojung, Linda, and Moran for such an interesting webinar. Uh, we really appreciate and I hope everybody has a great week.